Hello, welcome back to Brandon Sushi Life Funding. In this episode, I want to show you kind of like a process involving geometry nodes and cell fracture um, to do like a 3D Voronoi. So first of all, you turn on the cell fractures add-on. And so the, the idea is to start with uh, any geometry and then you add a, like particle system points and then you create like a cell fractures. And then you bring back the fractured objects with geometry nodes so there's a yeah there's a couple of things but it's not it's not too bad so with the default cube and geometry nodes you're gonna just create another cube inside it so by doing this of course we have another default cube and we can scale do whatever you can add a subdivisions let me save this first so this is like a GM fracture this could be simpler if we have like a 3D Voronoi node, but in this case, uh, we're gonna do a couple of steps. Uh, so you start with the geometry, so any geometries, and right after these objects, we're gonna create a particle system. And with this particle system uh, created, we want, so let's say we want to fracture this into 50 different fractured, uh, we're gonna set the frame start and end and I will sort this I will enable use modif modifier stack okay so it's using the geometry nodes and I will use instead of emit from face I want the particles to be inside the volume of the objects um, and then yeah, you can randomize the points So I believe after you do this, you simply use F3 and then do the cell fracture. And then this is based from the add-on. You just simply, I think I'll just use the default options. I'm gonna fracture it. So by doing this, you will be creating a fracture based on the geometry nodes let's see okay the it seems to be fractured but the result is seems to be slightly off uh yeah i wonder why let me delete this maybe i should apply the geometry nodes anyhow so i'm gonna apply this and then f3 cell fracture wait a few seconds okay now we have result and all these fracture objects is still being selected just tap M new collections just put it there inside the collections so we have the original objects let's save this and then we have fractured objects okay so I will hide the original objects. I have the fracture objects that I will hide as well. I'm gonna create another geometry and create another geometry nodes. Bring in the collections. Plug this. Suddenly we have this uh, like a fractured objects. Okay, so it's it's been pra it's been fractured and so we have like a some kind of 3D Voronoi. So when you bring in like a collections into geometry nodes, you will see here on the spreadsheet. So this is like a collections and you can separate the children. Okay. And then you can use scale instances, rotate instances and translate instances. Okay. So let's try to scale. by default you can you can do this so potentially you can also like create like a some kind of exploded view so this is all um, kind of like applied on each separated objects on the each of the instance objects and we can randomize for example Randomize the scale. So by doing this, 
we have like a kind of like a Voronoi that's kind of like a crack surface objects and okay let's get rid of this we can also translate but uh, also rotate rotate instances so this is rotating each on every axis of each uh, instance so you can use random value plug this into the rotations and it's gonna rotate based on that if you use vector math and the scale yeah you can kind of rotate it each individually on each on pivot so slightly cracked object and this is kind of cool and you can also realize the instances so it's becoming back into real geometry and then you can use remesh yeah only if you want to do that otherwise you can just use bevel or um, yeah, I think remesh is pretty good. It's because it's by doing the remesh, you can simplify the objects. So scale, rotate, and translate. Translate instances. If you use translate, I, I think you can use positions and uh, scale to create like exploded view. So I think this. This could be handy. So it's a couple of things that you can do with this uh, kind of process. I don't know how to explain it, but you basically uh, you start with something like uh, like pre-process like a fractured object, and then you have the ability to modify each element's instant. So it's like a three D Voronoi, but the three D Voronoi is basically the cell the cell fracture would be nice if we can have it as a node but but then again you might be doing this like uh, multiple time with with different objects so again okay particle system if you have like a geometry nodes before this guy we can apply you know like if you have like a donut for example just to prove the points curve to mesh so we have this donut shapes that is procedural while still having particle system we don't actually need the physics we can turn off the physics from Newtonian to none so you have the donuts you still have the points that's inside the volume because we have we set it up with the particle system Let's say we want to have like 100 subdivisions and make sure you turn on modifier stack from here once again we need to apply this first and then f3 do the cell fracture by default you're gonna have just wait a few seconds you're gonna do the 3d Voronoi. okay once it's done once again, we have cell fracture, move this into new collections. Now back to our objects here, we're gonna be using collection number three. Suddenly, yeah, we have the, like a cracked surface that we can scale and adjust individually. You can have like exploded view. Oops. Oh, this have to be centered. Maybe the scale should be at the back. Maybe this should be relative. Oh, okay. I need to... So 
So basically, I was I was thinking I I need to set reset the pivot in order to get like a like a proper exploded view. But anyhow, I think you get the points um, by having like a fracture objects and put it inside the collections and then bring it back into geometry nodes as a separate objects instances. You can do some cool things with it like. You can individually translate, rotate, and scale the instance. Uh, I have to do something with the pivot, I think. Maybe I should reset the position of the pivot. It's a little bit like uh, if you're doing like cell fracture and animation nodes, except that you have a lot more control here. Oh yeah, okay. The origin of this object need to be at the center. Set origin to geometry. If you have the, if you can make the origin at the center then when you do like a exploded view using scale you're gonna have the effects from the center of the objects i don't know why it doesn't work maybe i need to translate the i need to transform this first okay here yeah. by doing that we have like, we can have like exploded view Anyway, that's the that's the idea. Anyway, maybe I should apply all transform. Yeah, well, you get the idea. So, exploded view using the translate, and then we have control over the scale, each individual scale. Um, so yeah, and uh, also control over the rotations. It's uh, slightly tricky, but anyway, uh, yeah, I just want to show you that. So hopefully this is useful. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.